Hello, hello, good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Um, how's everyone doing today? No one's here yet. I'm really talking to myself, but uh, by the time you see it, hi, now I see people. Uh, let me just pin this. All right, we're good to go. So hello, happy Tuesday. Um, welcome. We've had some of our day already. I've been drawing and, uh, and working and teaching <laughs> all of the above. Um, so today we are doing um, a narwhal, which I realize is actually, I think, our third whale that we've done. Um, but they're cute. They're kind of a unicorn of the sea. Um, and if you saw, I did a video last night of the exact drawing that we're doing today. Um, I sometimes like doing those. And uh, most of the time when I do those, I'll go straight in pen. So I didn't use any pencil, didn't erase. I just kind of had to go with the shapes, um, which can be a fun thing to do sometimes. So I challenge you to do that um, on your own sometime. Pick a drawing and just do it straight in pen. And you kind of have to, you have to visualize where lines are gonna cross, where you're gonna leave gaps. Um, it's kind of a fun thing to try. Uh, and you know what? If it doesn't work out, you just scratch it and start over. Um, but uh, it's also kind of fun way to see um, if you can force yourself to work with your mistakes. Um, so let me flip the camera around. Um, I went back to this orientation. So if we, um, if we are doing a drawing that is in portrait, we're going to keep it in this because it, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't look right um, on the camera, even though it fills the screen. Um, and then if we're doing something that's in landscape, I'll turn it for landscape. So here is our drawing. Let me click my light on. So there we go, our happy little narwhal. Um, we do have a giraffe on our list, and we do have Pua. I saw someone request Pua. Um, so the cute thing about this drawing is, um, I mean, one, they're narwhal, but they really, if you watch, if you flip this upside down, it looks like a heart. So we're trying to capture that kind of heart shape um, and then I put a heart in the little water splashes. And as far as on here, I, we haven't drawn a banner yet. This is my first time to, time to teach you guys kind of how to draw this banner. Um, you can write anything you want. I really like puns and playing off of words. So I said, um, will you be mine? You could do, I whaley love you. So you can just kind of come up with, um, a funny way to incorporate the word whale, or you can write anything you want, or you could leave the banner off entirely because maybe you want to draw yours, um, with some other background involved. Um, that is completely up to you. Uh, all right, I got myself all scooted in. And let's get to drawing. So, I'm just really going to start kind of putting them on the page and um, hoping that they line up in a heart. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So I, uh, I, I will end up making their um, horns. They might be different lengths just to make sure that they are touching in the center. Oh, I have pen on my or pencil on my fingers. I just smudged it. So to start with our first um, narwhal, go ahead and do a teardrop shape 
which we've done for other drawings, and we've also done it when we've drawn our whales, right? We kind of build off of this teardrop. And then you can put another one a little bit over from the first and draw a teardrop. And they don't have to be the exact same size. Uh, mine weren't on my original drawing either. One was a little bit bigger than the other. And this one's a little bit wider. This one's a little bit narrower. So two teardrops. And then the horns, we can go ahead and put those in. I'm just going to put one in, do this triangle with a slight curved tip. And then this one is going to touch the other one. So when you come up, I want that to start a little bit lower. I can tell already I'm not going to reach my... So I'm going to touch it right there, curve it around, and come back in. And there are the two horns. start of our narwhals. So the bodies, they're going to curve off of these lines that we already made. So I'm going to start with this outside line and I'm just going to put my pencil down right on top of it, follow it, but curve it in. So I'm just drawing kind of a curve line that's going up because I'm going to put the tail in here. And this is the outside line of the whale. I can go ahead and build the tail off of this. So I'm just going to do a curve line out. This is also kind of a teardrop, teardrop shape, the tail is, and come in. And then another curve shape out and come in, leaving a little gap. Oh, best fins forever. I like that. That's a good thing to put on the banner. Oh, sorry. Now, so you've done this outside curved line and you've put in the tail. And now the inside curved line, you can build right off of the tail because you've left this gap. So you're just going to take this line and curve it back into the body. just like that. And then you can erase the line inside. And now you just kind of check your shape. You see, do you like the shape that it gave you? You can change some lines. I'm going to make this a little bit more curved down. I'm going to make this one a little bit wider. and then I'll erase those lines inside. And see, that's the thing, when you're doing it with pencil, you can change around your shapes. When I did it yesterday in pen, boy, I had to throw a shape on the page and then just stick with it and be happy with it. But when I have pencil, I can erase and change it. So I like that shape a little bit better. And all I did was just really kind of changed, built off the lines I had. Now 
Now this narwhal, we're going to do the same thing with the body, kind of curve off of this body line. Make it a little bit wider. And part of its tail is going to be hidden inside of the other narwhal's tail. So I'm gonna curve the line out and come into the tail. Make sure and make that dark enough so you can see. So I would imagine that one of my tails is back here, but the other tail is going to come off of this behind, okay? So I have one that's hidden back here. I might put parts of it in, see how I did um, with the original drawing. I'll show you what we're doing here. See, this tail is covering, we've already drawn this tail, it's covering this other tail. And I wanna kind of maintain this heart shape so I'm just going to start by drawing the inside of the tail on the other side of this fin. So I'll have a little bit of that, pre, that other tail just kind of coming right here, and then it's hiding behind. I could even have it coming through on the other side maybe. All depends on how your narwhals line up. And then I'll draw the other side of the tail, that teardrop shape, curving in. And now from this line, I'm going to curve it back into the narwhal. And I'll erase this weird little line because it looks really goofy right now. And then I'll check my shape and see, do I like this? And I think I want it a little bit wider in here. So I'm just gonna add another curve in this space. There, I like that shape a little bit better. And now, this could have been a good Mother's Day drawing. If you turn it over, you have somewhat of that heart shape. And again, it doesn't have to be perfectly heart shaped. I am gonna erase this right here. And now I have those two narwhal with their tails kind of covering each other. And I'm gonna give them each a simple eye. I did not know that their horn is a tooth. So I'm gonna do a circle inside both with a little circle inside of each eye, that little circle of light inside the eye. And then I want them both to have smiles. So I'll have little smiles coming in And I wanted spots along their back, so I just kind of put some are kind of just half circles, some are full, some are bigger than others, just down the back, just to give some design to it. I'm gonna do the same on this other. I don't know much about narwhals, but I think they're really cute. They almost look mythical. Like you really kind of look at them and think, are those really an animal? But they actually exist. 
I'm also going to do some little detail on the tail and just do some curve lines kind of along this bottom edge. This one you'll see it, this one you won't. And then lastly, I need to give them both a fin. So the fin is kind of, it's slightly triangle shaped, but it is going to, so I'm gonna take a line, I'm gonna curve out a little, I'm gonna curve back in and then make it come around. There's fin number one. And then same thing over here for fin number two. And then you could do, I'll do two different styles of horns. You could kind of do a horn like a unicorn would have and just do those kind of diagonal curved lines down into the narwhal's face. Or you can do kind of these crossed lines so it almost looks like it's woven. So just little di diagonal lines on top of each other. Like that. I didn't know what a normal was until it came up for letter N when I was first teaching. An Arctic, I can't even read that, Mom. Cetacean, cetacean, that reaches a length of 16 feet and possesses in the male one or rarest two long spirally twisted pointed tusk. Oh, so it's almost like a walrus tusk. Interesting. Now this is it for our narwhal. I wanted to add some little splashes of water, so I did little teardrop shapes, kind of two out to the side. A bigger one and a littler one. And then I did two little ones off of each tail. And then I did a heart in the middle. Since we have, you could even do a heart over here with the other drops. You could definitely add more hearts. I can't slow down because everybody else is already where we're at. So what I would suggest doing is just maybe starting the video um, when, when it's all finished and then you can watch from the beginning and you can pause wherever you need to. We've also done in other drawings those action lines, so you could do some of those if you like, those little curved lines like that, which kind of show movement and would make them look like they're jumping. That's another option that you could do. If you don't wanna do the splash. And then, you know, you could do a background in here. You could have them actually, you know, put a water line in as if they're both leaping up out of the water. But I'm going to teach you how to do that banner. We haven't done a banner yet. So for a banner, I want the banner to be about as wide, the main part of the banner to be about as wide as the whales. So I'm going to start here outside of the, the where the whales are. And I'm going to do a curved line over to the other side. And I had my paper at an angle, so that curved line got pretty crazy. So I'm going to do that again. So just a slightly curved line. <laughs> curve. <laughs> All of my parents get that one. <laughs> and then 
a little distance away from it, I'm going to do another curve line that follows the first shape. And I'll finish both of those with a line. Now on a banner, you kind of want it to look like it's, um, it's folded a little. It's kind of what makes it look like a banner is that bend. So up here on the top, I'm gonna put a triangle. I'm gonna put a little line coming up and then a line coming down to the other corner. So see how I just added a little triangle on the corner? And I'll do the same on the other side. I'm gonna put a line coming in and then a line coming down. So little corners. And you could even do one on the top and one on the bottom if you wanted it to look like the, the other one was folded a little below versus on top. Now from wherever your corner comes up, that point, you're going to take another curved line out and a curved line out on this side. This is that ribbon end of your banner. Put a V And then from this V, come right back into, it should bring you about to the middle of your banner. So same thing on this other side, I'm gonna put a V, and then a line coming in. And there you go, now you have a banner. And when you color it, what I usually do is I color this part, this part, and this part lighter and I color these little triangles darker so they look like they're hidden behind. I'll show you I did that in um, the other drawing. So see how I put this darker edge in the corners? And yeah, that gives it kind of a 3D effect. It makes it look like it's folded back because if we actually did that, that back part would look a little bit darker. And now you just write whatever you like on your banner. Um, you you know want to work on spacing. Sometimes you'll you'll write it once and then oops sorry, you'll write it once and then you might have to write it again because maybe the first time you run out of room. You kind of want to keep your letters about the same size. So I'm going to. Today I'm gonna to do I, I'm gonna do all lowercase letters too today. I will whaley like you and once I add an exclamation point see if I just left it like that I have a bigger gap on this side than I have over here so that's where your punctuation will help you because if I put a little exclamation point now the gap is the same size and my wording fits inside my banner so the same thing happened last night when I drew it. I drew it a little bit to, I have, was very close over here, but see the gap I have over here? Gosh, I keep bouncing my camera around. I had all this room, so what did I do? Two question marks, problem solved, now it fits inside the banner. So you can just use that little punctuation and that'll help you fill the space. 
Another thing I'll sometimes do in banners, and let's do it on the back here. I'm gonna draw you one more. So let's do our banner. Quick one. <laughs> I didn't get that one right, but that's okay. Okay, so now I have my banner. So sometimes if maybe I have too much room on both sides, um, so let's say I'm just going to write, I love you, but I don't like all this space on each side. You can do like fancy little curls on the sides to fill the space and put one on each side, right? You could also put a heart on each side to fill the space if you had a lot of extra room. So there's a lot of ways to just kind of fill that little space in there. Um, and, you know, one of the easiest, especially if you ended up with too much on one side and a smaller on the other is just fix it with punctuation. Add some punctuation in. So now we have both of our narwhal and we have our banner. So we just start doing our outline. So I'm gonna do this guy first because he's on the top. So that way I make sure all of his lines are in So when I put my other one, I don't accidentally draw through my lines. So this one, see, kind of comes on the inside of it. curve just like that now they're both in there so the drawing book I use um, my favorite paper always used to come from Blick but then I discovered this paper at Target and it's cheaper and it's really smooth. And so I like it for colored pencils, especially. You wouldn't wanna use this if you were doing any, um, it's this one. So they sell this at Target in two sizes, nine by 12, and then the smaller one I think is maybe six by something. But um, if you're, it's perfect for pencil coloring. You would not want to use it if you were coloring watercolor. Um, and if you're coloring in pen, actually coloring the design in in pen, your pen will bleed through this paper. So I always have a piece of scratch paper if I am coloring in coloring it in pen. I put a piece of scratch paper in between so that way I don't um, I don't ruin the page behind it. These pens, my drawing pens, they don't show up through, but regular pens always do. They bleed through. At least all my pens do. But yeah, once I started coloring in pencil, this became my favorite paper because it's a really smooth paper. Sometimes paper has a lot of texture in it, and the texture will actually throw th or show through in your coloring. You'll have a lot of kind of ridges, and this paper is really nice and smooth, and it's cheap, and, and I can find it at Target, so it's nice to be able to just run in. Target was sold out of it for a very long time, and now ours, at least here in West Sac, has a big old stack of it right now. Um, my pen, my outline pens are called Micron. Micron, you can also find these at Target. 
or you can find them online at Blick or on Amazon. They usually come in a, um, a three pack or they'll come in a five pack with other sizes. And then the erasers are um, Magic Rub, Prismacolor Magic Rubs. And those I just discovered. Someone in the group sent me a little care package and they had those erasers in it. And I am sold. I love them. I will never buy another eraser. I used to always just buy the pink ones. Um, but I love... I love these magic erasers. And uh, I will say on the paper, Amazon sells it too. It's way more expensive on Amazon. Targets is way cheaper. So uh, even if you did that, um, you know, Target has a pickup option. If you don't want to go inside the store, um, I would suggest if you're buying this p paper, this you create, definitely get it through Target because it's a lot less expensive. So I'm just doing all of my little lowercase letters. Sometimes I like doing that in drawings. I'll either do all capitals or I'll do all lowercase. It'll be fun to see what you all wrote on your banner. If you did something different. I really thought that Finn one was pretty cute. All right, there's my drawing. And now I'm just going to erase all that pencil that's left. This would be a really cute drawing to do on the outside of a card. Um, I think right now is a great time to get back in the habit of mailing things. Not email, but the kind where you actually put a stamp on it. <laughs> um, mailing things to your friends or your family that you're not seeing right now. And you can make your own cards. So just take the piece of paper like you have and fold it in half and then draw your drawing here and then you could write a little message inside. This is a cute one to do on a card. Looks like a looks like something you'd see on one of those cards. And I'll tell you what, I am a sucker for cards. I love cute cards. I sometimes go to Target and just look at all the cards and buy all the ones I like, but there kind of is nothing better than someone hand making you a card. All right, I'm gonna color now. So I am, um, do you ever draw a picture with outlining the picture in black? I never do, ever. I always outline. Um, I, you know, I sometimes don't use pencil I go straight to the outline, um, but I have never done, I don't think a single drawing where I didn't outline it first. I just, I like the look of it. I don't know if it just comes from, you know, um, yeah, I don't know. I've always done an outline. I've sometimes done outlines in colored pens. Um, so, for example, I have a set. Um, this was also sent to me uh, by a groupie. <laughs> I'll call you guys groupies. Is that okay? Um, 
I got this nice set. And I sometimes will outline in color and I'll outline. So like if I was doing this narwhal in a blue, I'd outline in that blue. If I was doing this in this blue, and then it looks less like an outline because it's outlined in the same color family it's going to be colored in with, but I always do an outline. I have done, um, I've done drawings where I've outlined, I've done the outline and I haven't colored them in all the way. Um, I think even one like this, you could just color in, you know, your water splashes and do your eyes and leave it and call it good. Like you don't have to always color in the whole thing to make it look cute. Um, you see a lot of art that is just what they call, you know, pen, pen and paper art. It's just the ink and the paper, no color. Or just little bits of color here and there. I did a cute elephant drawing the other day that were two elephants and they were holding a balloon. They were each holding the same balloon. And that one would be really cute with just the, um, just the balloon colored in. Bye, thanks for drawing today. I'm gonna do their tusk horn yellows, but I'm gonna do each of them a different color yellow. So this one is called golden. Golden yellow. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> and this one doesn't even have whatever pencil brand this is. It doesn't have a color. It doesn't say what color it is. It just has a number. Some pencils and pens do that. They won't actually name them. They'll just give you a number for the color. And I'm going to come back with my pen and do the eye, just coloring it in black. leaving that little circle of light. And now my narwhal, I'm gonna do two different colors, um, give them each their own color. And I'm doing one that's kind of sea green, like a sea foam green. It's called pea green, not sea green, but and then the other is called Mountain Blue. Sharpening a little bit. So when I color these, I'm gonna color the spots dark down the back. And then the rest I'll color in light. I will probably add a little bit of extra shading, a little bit in the tail, and a little bit in the fin, but I'll get it all colored in first. Ooh, metallic gold. I love the metallics. My new pencil set I got had um, another gold, which I already had, um, but it also had a silver. So now I have a silver metallic. Oh, 
And I want to look and see if there's like a metallic set. Sometimes pencils will do full sets, like they'll do a whole neon set. Um, I want to see if there's a metallic set because I would love to have some like metallic pink or a metallic blue. And since I moved the pad of paper from underneath this and I'm coloring straight on the wood today, it's, uh, it's a little more streaky, I guess you'd call it, a little more streaked. I can see a lot of the white coming through. So always remember if you're coloring and you feel like you're just picking up a lot of lines, try putting another couple sheets of paper underneath it because sometimes just adding that little extra padding will help your color blend a little bit better. Oh, we have a Crayola metallic set. Yeah, see, I want a, a big set of metallic. And then I'm gonna do, like I said, just a little bit of shading here in the fin, kind of the tip, and then just kind of coming up into the body and just a little bit along this inside line and a little over here. Just like that. And then this other guy, I'm gonna use this pea green, which is probably my favorite green in these pencils. I really like how it's kind of a, a blue green. I almost would call it like a seafoam green. But, you know, I don't name the colors. I just use them. So this guy has a little bit of tail right here. And then tail. I'll have to look at Target next time I go and look for metallics. So right now, since I just bought that big set, I have enough pencils to last me quite a while. Quite a while. I'm a sucker for art supplies. Oh, I wail I wailly need your help, yep. Or even just I wailly need you. Will you please wash your hands? There's all kinds of fun little puns you can do. Puns are fun. They make me laugh. And a little bit inside this. See, some of you are done already. You guys are fast. Much faster than me. And today I am going to color my banner pink. So I'm going to do this heart. I did a heart in my exclamation point just because I did some hearts throughout the drawing. And then I'm going to do these little corners dark. So I'll go ahead and put that in first. And then come in lighter and do the rest of the banner. And banners are fun. They're a fun way to add some words to your um, words to your drawing. Uh, we've done a lot of that where we've added lots of words and we usually always just write them off in the air or we put them in a thought bubble. But this is another cute way to do wording. Make it look a little bit unique so it's not always the same. Tight 
ties it together. We're almost done here. Just a little bit. And there we go. There's my little narwhal drawing. And then, so I'll show you. If I was doing this on a card, I like I said, I, I really always like to sign my art but I'm not always writing my full name on it. Um, so what I like to do is I go in with a really skinny pencil or really skinny pen and I just initial it. So that's my little, can you see that? That's my tiny little signature. So it's fun to come up with what you think your tiny little, like you're a superstar professional, what your signature would be. So I do that on all of my art. If you ever buy a piece of art from me, it has that tiny little signature somewhere on it. And then it doesn't take away from the rest of the drawing. Um, but you know, for you, I'm going to write my name on my paper. But if I was doing this on a card, I would do this on the outside, and then my name, I would just write inside the card, like, love, Stacy, And my age. And today we have no birthdays on my list. So I had no one on my list for birthdays. Um, I'm not sure if I have any tomorrow either. I do, oh yes, we do have something tomorrow, and then we definitely have something Thursday because Thursday is my son's birthday and he is going to draw with us. He doesn't, I don't know if he knows this yet, but um, he will be here with me drawing. Um, and that is really all I have for today. So tomorrow we are back here at 11 a.m. is our drawing on Wednesdays. And we are drawing The Simpsons, um, a Simpsons, Simpsons theme drawing. So we will see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. for The Simpsons. All right. Thanks so much for drawing with me, guys. Have a good rest of your Wednesday.